I'm sorry. I'm a red-blooded American. Yeah. I like meat. I like yeah. flags that have our colors. I like burnouts too. Yeah. And I'm sorry, every truck should be able to do that. Welcome to Texas Truck Channel, I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And today we've got something super special and that is the, finally we get to drive this thing, Craig. The Chevy ZR2 Silverado 1500, not the 2500, and it's in bison trim, which is super awesome. Let's come to the front, let's start with the snout. Craig, do you know what this is called right here? Uh, I'm afraid to say. Don't say it, it's called a flow tie. Don't mix it up with any other words, but that's what it is. It's all for cooling, let's be honest, it's for coolness um, and just to, you know being cool. You get this on Camaros as well. I just think this is a really neat way to do the bow tie. I like it, especially it just kind of stands out from all the other Silverados. Pretty cool with that. But the real meat and bones, Craig, Ooh. you hear that? So that what? is hot stamped boron steel. That is a really heavy Ooh. but relatively light bumper with integrated um, D-ring hooks. This is where you can put a bow shackle in here. These are frame mounted. You can lift the truck with these. They're incredibly strong. They're not gonna rip off or anything like that from the factory. Ooh. Something else I wanna point out, we're up here, Craig, maybe you can see over that side better. There's a step on the front. I don't know um, quite why you need that. Maybe AEV thinks you're gonna need to get under the hood for some reason, don't know. Maybe someone's expecting a big ladder rack. Maybe you're a contractor and you have this truck. I don't know, and it's over, I don't know. Someone comment below why you think you need a front step. Also below, more skid plates, Craig. This package from AEV paired with GM from the factory is just shy of $8,000 and it gives you a front sump uh, pan. We just saw it right there. It covers steering and oil pan. It gives you a transfer case pan. There's an, it extends to the transmission. There's also a diff cover in the rear, a cover skid plate, and rock rails on the side and bumpers front and rear. That's what you get with AEV. Oh yeah, plus wheels and don't forget floor mats. So, so basically you full send anywhere and you're protected. <laughs> well, I don't know full send, but full rock crawl anywhere. Mm. And look, I'll argue, this is probably the most capable trail half-ton truck on the market. Mm. I think it has to be, because you also get front and rear lockers that come standard on ZR2. So you, all the meat and potatoes are here, it's really cool. So let's check out those wheels we're talking about. These are 18-inch wheels. It has Goodyear Territory MTs. That does not mean mud train, it means maximum traction. These are 275, 7018s. And I gotta tell you right now, Craig, these are the quietest Goodyears I've ever driven. They're really quiet. I took this thing to Houston and back. I drove it, what, 800 miles this week? These are really livable tires, no complaints with them. They're not quite as aggressive as some other all-trains, but they're the right balance for what this truck is. I'm really happy with those, proud of that. Uh, down to the middle, the wheels, these look awesome. Look, AV is expensive, and that's because they design things well, and they are just known for quality. You're never gonna have problems with this wheel, and it, look, it's probably not functionally better than the Zero Two wheel, but it looks really cool. Look in there, I'm not sure if you can get it with the camera, Craig. Those shocks are the important part. That's what makes the ZR2 what it is. Those are DSSV Multimatic shocks. That's the same company that made the 4GT, same company that made the shocks for the Z28 Camaro. They will adjust their valving on the fly. And I gotta tell you, around town, on cer certain bumps, they could ride about that much better. But when you find this thing in its groove with a little bit of speed, it comes to life. And you can tell it's doing its thing, even with weight in the back. We've had a lot of weight in this thing all week, uh, taking ATVs around, and it, it even under compression, you can find the bump stop sometimes that you can feel it working before it bottoms out. So pretty neat to see that. Um, you've got badge right here, zero two. That's what you're really buying right there. You also get these 6.2. We'll talk about that dude here in just a minute. I do want to say this badge feels a little bit Buicky compared to the sharp looking zero two badge. What about this bulge? Is that, is that for extra power? Or yeah. Is it so big or? No, that's to reduce visibility, but we'll talk oh. about that in a minute <laughs> okay, when we get okay, around okay. in a minute. Um, the mirrors do close. Uh, when you leave the vehicle, it automatically locks and closes the, door, the mirrors for you. I do like that. Um, it has a simple button, it's easy to use. It's not the put your hand in and pull, but we're being picky. Um, these rock rails, Craig. We've already not had- Not side steps. Not side steps. In fact, I've had complaints from my spouse saying this is a terrible side step, and I go, that's because it's not a side step, and that explains that. The one thing I'm curious about, Craig, is these are actually body mounted, not frame mounted. But you brought up a good point off camera. They're from AEV, they're rated for a reason. It's also bolted to what looks like what would be a frame rail on a unibody vehicle, so I'm sure it's plenty of strong, but you know, if you really push this on the Rubicon, you might find the limit to it. We might find it on the hill test. We, we might find it on the hill test. Probably not, but we might. Fuel door, most important thing we test on any vehicle. Yes, full pass. It is a capless system. And that guy right there, you know what that is, Craig? Mm, for a uh, flow No, 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 ties. no, it's, you can also get a diesel on this thing now. This one doesn't have it, but you can get- Late availability this Late year. availability, but that's where the death fluid would go. It does recommend premium. I'll be honest, I ran 87 all week and couldn't notice any problem, had plenty of power all the time. So there's that. Coming around to the back, same wheel there, but here's this AEV bumper in the rear. What I do find is interesting, Craig, is you lose the step 
that the regular Silverado has, but you gain one on the front. I'm really curious huh. about that and why that is. Another thing I want to point out, this decal on the bed, I'll be completely honest, I would peel that off out of aesthetic preference as soon as I bought it, because it just looks kind of funny, but it does make it stand out in a parking lot, and that's what matters. Coming down low, more of these bow shackle mounts right there, they're super strong. You got your hitch right here, and more importantly, you got your exhaust. Looks like a Talked Mopar. Up. Yeah, I like it. It looks like a Mopar muscle car turned down exhaust. I love it. And if you look at the approach angle or departure angle of this thing, they're just out of the line of scraping on things. That's something specific to the Zero Two Bison. You don't get that on the other ones. I like that a lot. I wouldn't mind if it had a mode on it, but that's all. Let's hear it anyways. All right, with that uh, exhaust disappointment of rev limiter, let's check out the interior with Craig. All right, the 23 Bison ZR2, that's the most important, the Bison part, because Brian, look over here. So much so that they put a sticker on there to let you know, let everyone else know what you got. It's a Bison. Pretty interesting animal choice, but you know, that's what AEV's gone with. And over here, Brian, more AEV goodness with a Bison logo. Pretty cool, um, you know. Sure. For, for what you, that's worth $8,000, I think. Oh, that badge alone. All right, so let's check out the tailgate. Okay, dampen, that's good. Let's I see if like it goes that. up, auto. No, $85,000, uh, Brian keeps mentioning that's how much this truck cost. You don't get an auto up tailgate, so you know, there's that. But hey, when you're overlanding, does that matter? Doesn't matter when you're overlanding. Right. And then it does do the uh, tow the front porch step, the GM thing, so you can sit back here and have a tailgate party, get your cup holder, even when you're overlanding with the Bison. That's pretty cool. Also, you got the old man little uh, lever here, so you can get in real easy. I actually think it's a little controversial. Ron and I argue about this all the time. I think this is the best tailgate setup out of all the tailgate setups out there, but let us know what you think. Normally there would be a bed cover back here. We've got, you can see the little handles for it and stuff to hold it up and prop it up. We've took it off because we had, Brian mentioned earlier, we had ATVs back here all week and the ATV actually sat back here great. They got this nice bed lining, the Chevy Tech liner, whatever they call it. You do get some lights back here and plenty of tie down points, which was handy when we were hauling the ATV around. Let's check out the interior. Moving into the uh, rear cab of the AEV Bison. Bison-wise, we don't get a whole lot back here, but we get all the other Silverado goodness. Uh, plenty of deep door pockets for hydro flask, good door handles, nice and beefy. I know this is not a side step, but Brian, you can step on it a little bit. Uh, okay. Home, so anyways, uh, getting in on in here though, you get a nice armrest, which works. The AC vents work well. The kids are very happy about that. You get heated rear seats, which, well, let's be honest, 107 degrees in Texas, that's pointless. You get USB-A <laughs> and USB-C for the hipper kids. Map pockets on both sides because sometimes you navigate from this side, Brian. Mm -hmm. Fair. Um, no pano or sunroof, Brian, which means you might fit. Get on in here. Let's show the people they want to know. Let me use the not side step. Yep. But good handle to pull in, by the way. Okay, good. Dude, no problem at all. Very nice. Plenty of room. And I'll be honest, the one with the sunroof is lower back here. No. Yeah. So they actually, without the center, if you are still getting headroom, even though it looks like this is the same cutout. All right, Brian, let's check out storage before you go underneath the seat. Look right in here, you get the hidden compartment for, well, who knows what, uh, maybe some Walter White material. Um, <laughs> put the seat up and you get some storage back here. A little controversial uh, bin right here, Brian. We've noticed that maybe it probably comes out if we had more time with the car, we could take it out. But it's hard to like fit stuff so, in here. So, so when you have the seat down, put that down. Yeah, you put it down and then it just right. kind of squishes it. So it, yeah, anyways, yeah, it, it could be better. Yeah. You know, it's stuff, it does keep stuff from flying around, right. but I'd rather it just not be there, but I'm sure it's an easy solve. Sir. All right, Brian, we're in the 23ZR2, which means maybe fast on dirt. <laughs> but this is the Bison, which means we're probably slower what we're getting ready to do, Pull but it doesn't yeah. matter. Just hit it, hit it. Yo. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, tool drive. There we go. 5,800 RPM. Sounds good. 6.2 liters of America and 60 miles an hour. 8.09 seconds with both of us in it. Look, that's with wheel spin, we're being hooligans. Yeah. 7.08 and 102 degree actual temp. That's true. That's really good. That's actually, true. actually yeah. look, 80 degree weather, you may have dropped almost half a second. Right. Not, not joking right. around. No, no. So, I'll, yeah, seriousness. And the TRX Hellcat truck in this temperature did worse when it was acting up. Good point. 
Also, this thing's got a lot of extra protection, which this thing is heavier. Sure. It's not designed for what we just did right there. At all. No, no, no. no. But the best part is... tires, you know, tall gearing. You just mentioned the Hellcat, so I'm just going right back to it. You know what you can do in this truck that you can't do in the Hellcat? That over and over and over and over? You can't do burnouts. Oh, and burnouts. That's... <laughs> no, good point. Look, out of all the super trucks out there... Which this isn't. Quote, unquote, super trucks. This isn't. This is not... I would say this is not a super truck, but yeah. top-level off-road trucks out of all the, the four manufacturers. Fair. Yeah. Let's just say this. There's not any others that you can get with a V8 and tool drive. That's a really good point. That's so. a very good point. And the only other one that will do it is the Raptor R, which costs a gazillion dollars. Sure. Almost not even comparable with the space on that. Right. So um, let's get to it. Ride and drive, Craig. We've driven yeah. the GMC AT4X, mm -hmm. which I'm going to say rides a little bit worse than this does. Mm -hmm. And I think it's down to tire because these, I think mechanically, this is, as far as I can tell, is identical. It should be mostly tire, yeah. Mostly yeah. tire. This has the uh, the territory MTs mm -hmm. instead of the dirt tracks. Which they're okay. Yeah, these are way quieter than the dirt track is. They're definitely better than the dirt tracks. Yeah. And they ride a little better. I think it's mm -hmm. mostly tire. Yeah. Um, that out of the way, this is a quiet highway machine. The steering is like what it should be. It's not doing anything funny. And it, when you get it at speed over dirt, it starts to really come into its element, kind of like a Gen 1 Raptor does. Uh, yeah, and that's where the spool valves do come into play. Yeah, they make Th a These are good shocks. Um, They're great and, shocks. And talk yeah. more about that, because that's really okay. the, that's the party trick of this whole thing. Well, what I, what I was going to get into is that low speed, it's better than a Gen 1 Raptor. I keep saying that because that started this whole segment mm -hmm. in the premium shock in a truck segment. The, that truck was only good at speed on dirt. Mm -hmm. Everywhere else, it was kind of choppy. Mm -hmm. This is not as good as like the Fox Live valve. Uh, maybe not as good as the TRX with its adjustable bill stains, but right. really close to that yeah. at lower speeds. And then when you light it up or when you put almost its max payload in the back, it doesn't deteriorate that much. Right. It barely deteriorates, actually. You good just point. lose some shock travel. But because its shock travel has changed, it hasn't lost its compression ratios. Mm -hmm. It's just adjusted for you because it has spool valves. Mm -hmm. I really appreciated that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Bravo. That did well. Now, the bison stuff, because this is a bison. Right. Doesn't really affect any of the ride and drive stuff, let's be honest. Skip light, skip light, skip light, skip light, bumper, bumper, wheels, I'm sorry, floor mats, headrest. Yeah. Doesn't make a difference with that. Yeah. Um, other than that, I do want to make a point with the interior. I know we covered this earlier, but the build quality of this interior is just really good. Yeah, you're right. This goes to all GM uh, currently uh, half ton trucks now. The the interior that they've done, redone, is yeah. really good. They've caught up. They're right at the head of the pack with everyone else now. It's almost down to preference at this yeah. point. Well, Which one do you like better? I think this is better than some of its competitors. This I, one in particular, being a press vehicle, has probably had some extra attention. But I just there's not a creak or a rattle in here. Well, I did not like. I like the layout of this. I like the landscape layout more than the portrait layout. You Me know, too. that it looks good. It's it's usable. The ergonomics. You mentioned the ergonomics are really good. It's a long road yeah, trip. Yeah, it's. I'm really happy with that. And it's. Well, now let's talk about mileage. I've gotten. Let's see here. On to, on the last road trip to Houston and back, 642 miles, 12.6 my average. But you also had a payload of of uh, Quite a 900 bit. pounds in the bed, and with the family of four in here, sure, we were standing on top of the max payload for the truck. Good point. So good we were point. right at it. Um, so it's, you know, it was up there, but in my driving around town, I was getting about 13. Okay. So 13 is about what you're going to get. Yeah. It's not, it's not great. You can really feather the, the throttle on these LSs and yeah. on the highway, you probably could get much better than that. Yeah. Um, we have before. Oh, um, for sure. But, uh, we, but the 6.2 is great. It's a great look. And while I was parking that real quick. I want to cover a few things and then we'll be, yeah. we'll be done with that. The 6.2 is not an exciting motor. I'm sorry, you're gonna be mad with me. Don't <laughs> like your keyboards up or do, that's fine. But it's not like this racy, exciting motor. And that was my problem with the C8 VET. It was more sports car than it was sport engine. Mm -hmm. But it makes absolute sense in a truck. It has torque everywhere and it doesn't need to rev out. It's, it's almost like a Cayman block motor is really good for trucks. Almost so much that like maybe Ford should put in their super duties. Oh, wait a minute. They've caught up to GM. Oh, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, okay. Right. So it's it's a brute of a motor. It yeah. doesn't you don't need to apologize for anything. The only mm -hmm. thing that I I here's the controversial part. If it were my money, and I didn't have to have a zero two, if it wasn't like, oh I've got to have the best. I think the five three and the trail boss that we had was it a year ago or two years ago? Yes, with, with the six e, speed. The speak, six speed auto. I got better mileage than that than I did this. That thing was great. With the six speed, it got I got like yeah. eighteen to twenty everywhere. And it didn't feel slower necessarily. Well that's the thing, Craig. The five three, the numbers climb slower, but the sensation it, and the, the yeah. shifting all feels the same. Yeah. Like you don't get a different feel behind the wheel. So the five three is really good as I'm getting at. Yeah. And the six two is nothing to, to complain about. The benefit for this is this this is a overlander's rig. And that's I, that's the thing. That's the thing. We've all week people be like, oh well what's better? This or TRX? This or a Raptor? Whatever. 
I don't think you can compare them, Craig. Mm -mm. This is not a sport truck. It's not a wide body truck. And it's not a speed over dirt. And Although it's also you, not a luxury truck. It, good point. It is, Although it's, it's very durable, luxurious. durable touches, fa you know, fabrics, right. touch points. It's made to be get dusty on the trail. You're out on the trail oh. for months on end, and I, it's going to be able to handle it. I evacuated mud all over this driver's seat at a uh, at a mud bog this weekend, and it all just wiped off. Yeah, like that's, incredibly durable for all that. It's, if you're going to just overland, this is a great this vehicle. It's a great to get. truck, and it's yeah. narrow, and you get front locker, which you don't get on the super trucks. Right. So what I'm going to get at is this is kind of a leave of its own. Yeah. And that takes me to price. I think 85 grand for what you're getting is an awful lot. And the biggest thing, and you brought this up, if you went to AEV and ordered this bumper and these side steps and these wheels, it's probably going to be more than eight grand. Yeah. Right? This is a $7,800 package, I think, mm -hmm, for this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to argue that the Zero Two is already so good, you just really have to want the AEV stuff. Sure. Yeah. And if you really just, you're going to get the AEV stuff anyways, get this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If you're going to go and order their catalog, yeah. get the one that fits from the factory with a warranty and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and financing and all that. Right. All kinds of one stuff. One payment. But all that said, this is a great truck, man. I've really gotten along with it really well this week, and it's just been a good companion and a lot of dirty, icky, off-roady, heavy payload-y, family hauling situations. It just does everything. So Shimmy's made a good truck. What a shocker. <laughs> been a great truck. <laughs> great. Awesome. Glad we surprised everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shocker. Glad you waited to the end. I, it really is good. I'm yeah, happy with no, it. it and, uh, and all that. Good job, GM. I can't wait to see what else they're doing, because there's rumors they've got a Raptor fighter coming. Mm, be interesting. Curious to see what they do there. All right, well, uh, Rhonda, go ahead and hit it. But I want, there's a button here. I wanted to see what that is. That's fine, but don't, don't do it. Don't That's do it. Don't do it. Don't do that. Okay. There's two glove boxes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.